Alrighty, so we're back on here and uh, <clears throat> going to take a run at explaining how a storage synthesizer works here. I've drawn just a, a simple um, diagram here. I've not included a lot of the chips that are often used, for instance, for interfacing the bus. I've just drawn a memory chip up here with a common bus with the CPU and the digital to analog converter. And um, now when uh, when you you know punch up a patch on any more modern synth with storage from the Prophet 5 on uh, pretty much well Yamaha's uh, line didn't end until uh, uh, 79 they were still making that you needed something you need to go to manual and and back and forth um, <laughs> but uh, most of the other synths that came out after that were um, all uh, this type of uh, machine where you could on the fly edit. Now how that is accomplished, first uh, the central processing unit in the Poly 6 for instance we just talked about has has instructions inside the CPU but for most other synthesizers there's yet another another chip out here on the bus that uh, is an EEPROM chip that you can uh, you can uh, stick in a socket there and even get upgrades for sometimes which is nice but um, the CPU has instructions on the Poly 6 so we'll use it as the example here for simplicity and so this CPU goes around uh, to the different parameters and updates them through part of its routine and when it starts this routine it's going to start let's say its first parameter is the VCF cutoff so it will uh, put out on the address bus the address that will cause these multiplexers to select the line that corresponds to that. Now, a multiplexer is like a switch and uh, it's controlled digitally by, on, in the case of a 4051 CMOS, which most of these use, 4052, 4051, uh, these three lines, of course, there are eight different possibilities of uh, co combinations that can be um, used to access eight different lines. Now I've only drawn three here as an example. I just put three example parameters, the VCF cutoff, resonance, and EG amount. But in um, most examples they use all eight of those uh, to uh, address eight different things and we'll have several chips of course to access however many knobs are on the front panel on this side and to output the data from those knobs on this side to the a actual analog circuitry that is controlling the sonic phenomena that uh, you hear, or the uh, electrical phenomena that gets converted to sonic phenomena, obviously. <laughs> but anyway, okay, uh, so I discussed the, um, the buffer amp here, and this, these buffer amps, there's three of them here for each of these lines, they uh, isolate a capacitor which stores the uh, current amount of voltage that is being called for by that uh, circuitry it, it isolates it, the buffer amp isolates it so that the capacitor will not leak down during the time between the, the processor's cycle. So it may take it, you know, 15 milliseconds or something to get back around or, or maybe 100 milliseconds or what, depending, depending on the design of the synth, to get back around and recharge that capacitor. So it has to have a very low amount of leakage and that's why we use usually JFET op amps that just nano amps of leakage go through and um, so those uh, charges change indiscernibly over that amount of time. And um, so these uh, multiplexers, uh, there's one over here, one over here, and they're turned opposite directions. This one has a single input and it's fanning out to the eight outputs. This one has the eight inputs being fanned into a single output. And uh, so over here, it's reading the voltage of the knobs when, when the uh, VCF cutoff is selected. It's reading the VCF cutoff knob and that analog voltage created by that knob, which is just a potentiometer uh, spread between a couple voltage points. And uh, so say it's right in the middle and it's a plus minus supply, let's say it's zero volts there. And uh, so that zero volts is going to, when this opens up, be placed on the leg of this comparator chip, which compares the voltage of the DAC to the knob. 
Now the DAC is getting whatever the previous um, stored thing. Let's see, you just punched up the patch, so it would be it would be looking at the um, it would be looking at the voltage in memory. Now when the pa patch knob or when the knob gets moved, the um, patch buffer stores that on most of these newer synths, so that um, it it when it comes back around to refresh, it doesn't have to check again. It already knows what the value is and it just compares it and instantly says it's the same value the knob has not been moved. Now here's how it does that. When the comparator it's either going to be high or low and so you know if it's high the CPU is going to bump down the DAC. If it's low the CPU is going to bump up the DAC until it toggles, until it goes the opposite direction of whatever it was. Now if it does that on the first instruction cycle, let's say this was a value of 0010101, or 1101, uh, <clears throat> now if, if it bumped it up, it would go to 10 instead of 01 there. The least uh, significant bits would uh, change to 10. And uh, that would change the voltage output just enough up to where if this knob had not been moved, it would flip-flop the comparator and it would say, aha, the knob never got moved. The, the CPU would make that decision from the code installed therein and so it would just move on to the next parameter seeing that the knob had not been moved. And But also it would uh, take this DAC output and it would open up, enable this um, device so that it would open up this gate and dump that charge on and refresh the capacitor at least while it's there and thus uh, keep that at the right voltage for long periods of time because eventually these would leak off otherwise during a performance you'd be hear this your pitches sank or whatever <laughs> yeah. and um, so um, we have then uh, if, if the patch if the knob was moved and the patch is altered then the patch buffer is going to store that value as it's discerned by the CPU saying, okay, it didn't respond to me bumping it up one value. I'll bump it up another value, and another, and another. Or bump it down if you move the knob the other way. So, eventually the CPU catches up to that point and, uh, uh, or the DAC uh, outputs a voltage that is just breaks over that amount and the, the comparator flip-flops and the CPU reads that and it is able to say, okay, now we've reached that point store that to the patch buffer and if you hit right and you store it to a patch number the CPU makes the decision to store it into the actual static RAM chip usually is what was used on most of these um, so that's kind of how a uh, storage polysynth works Bob Weigel, a sound doctor and enjoy